All right, champions, we're back. We're about to dig into this thing. I'm going to do a quick little time lapse of it and time it as well, just see how I do compared to the quote. I'm going to chuck a podcast in my ear. I'm just going to focus and get to work. So I'll see you on the flip side. All right, champions, I've cleared off uh, pretty much, well, most of what I want taken out here, all the boards. Uh, some of the wiring, with that green goo, I'm going to replace as well. Not all of it has it, but um, probably the majority does. Seems to be only the white stuff. All the other color codes um, of the wiring don't, don't have any evidence unless it's from uh, one of the white ones connected to the same terminal, so... You can see here, it's even on the speaker one, it's like literally seeping out and, and wicking up like capillary action sticking to the chassis. So uh, that's all going to get replaced because it's oozing out from the wire itself. I was debating keeping the sockets. Uh, even though they're flimsy, terminals are like foil, really thin, and all the wiring done to it was dog shit. Uh, like, how's that for terminal? <laughs> Yeah, fantastic. But uh, I was debating whether or not to change them because it is a bit more labour and more cost of parts. Uh, but then I spotted here, you can see the blackened area there. That's that's a flyback event. That's um, That's been run without a load at some point and that's that's what you get from that. It's always between uh, pin 3 and pin 2. That's the heater and that's the plate. That's always the spot that it happens. Pin 3 with no load tries to hit infinity volts to maintain the same amount of current. The inductive spike occurs and then it reaches a point where it literally breaks over through the surface, um, through contamination on the surface or literally through the air. It gets to such a high voltage that it just arcs to the next pin. And the closest thing near ground potential is the uh, the heater, heater wires there. So. So once that's happened, it can be tracking through the actual plastic itself. I've seen people try and dig it away and it still keeps occurring. Just change the socket. You can't trust that socket once that's occurred. Well, because I'm not happy with the sockets at all in the first place and that one's got issues, it was just, that's changed a whole lot and put some sturdy, very tightly gripping Beltons in their place. So we'll also fully depopulate all the boards and clean all the wax and all the dirt off and get all the moisture out i might even bake these ones uh, overnight at a low temperature like you know 80 degrees or something to get the moisture out of them and then we'll clean hell out of them and repopulate them as i see fit now some of that will be replacing components that are original that have been fucked with some will be replacing original components that i don't like the value of that we can improve the amplifier by changing the values some may be drifted some may be just shit quality and some may be aftermarket dumb stuff that the previous guy did. I'll replace those old diodes with some new uh, 1N series silicons. I'll replace the bias resistors with metal film because that's one place where you don't want drift. We'll put a new axial um, filter cap there on the bias supply. I'll also remove all the grounds from the transformer hardware where they're expected to do double duty of uh, mechanically supporting the transformer as well as maintaining an electrical ground. 
we'll just mount them to somewhere where they haven't got any stress. We'll clean we'll clean the whole chassis, but we'll mount and uh, we'll just uh, solder them directly to the chassis nearby, a convenient place usually. In that gap down there, we'll clean that contamination off, and we'll just um, clean the chassis under the existing wiring as best we can. Get rid of the waxy residue because I can feel it. It's all all over the uh, the chassis. As this thing heats up and cools down, heats up, cools down. The wax sort of spreads out across the entire chassis, and it it gathers dirt and crud everywhere where it's it becomes sticky consistency. Uh, so we'll clean all that off with uh, shellite. Now I never understood this. Why have you got to write the valve type on the friggin' chassis? Seven seventy twenty-five. If you don't know the basic structure of a AB seven six three, or at least have the documentation to be able to refer to, which is public knowledge now, I might add, you shouldn't have your hands in an amp. Don't write on a chassis. It just makes you look like an amateur, and it just it's just rude. It'd be like servicing someone's car and and writing shit on the inside of the bonnet you just don't do it i've also disconnected the multi-tap primaries from that uh from that switch there which is starting to warp and that's not an area we want to fail so uh we'll just hardwire that and cap off the others in a particular way that i do that's safest i'll show you that when i do it just to look at the pots on the front panel and the jacks that all looks original Ooh, that one appears to be touching the chassis <laughs> It's been uh, pushed over sideways. Fix that up. We've got the same old um, issues with that green slime coming out of some some wiring here too, though. So that, all that's going to have to be addressed. I might remove that brass panel and just just clean all the crud off behind it because you can see there's spray residue. A lot of techs just uh, if there's any issues without knowing anything about board leakage or anything like that that can cause scratchy pots, they just they just throw liters and liters of WD-40 at it, which is not a material you should be using either. So we can probably remove all those pots in one big bank and uh, take the plate off and see if we can sort of keep stuff together so the reassembly time's minimized. To do that, however, we'll have to get the big Mamba Jamba soldering iron out and break those solder connections to the chassis. You can see down there, this one's copped a hit on the front too, which is quite common on these. Uh, when we've got the pots out, I'll see if I can persuade that straight again with a uh, a big beam and a uh, f-clamp i've removed the bias pot because it's critical that we get this area cleaned if it's uh, expected to to ground through it and all of this has got like that greasy residue from someone cleaning the pots as well as from the wax from the main boards as well and i've also removed the humdinger and its associated wiring um if i do do anything uh mounted i'll either plug that and nearby um put a heater balance pair of resistors However, it's often easier to just connect them from the heaters here on one of the output valves to uh, to the cathode, which on this particular amplifier, because it's fixed bias, is wired directly to the chassis. So you can hide away the heater balance resistors on one of the output valve sockets and just make sure everything's nice and rigid so it can't get pushed around and touch anything that matters. And the other thing I'll do on one or, one or two of the output uh, valve sockets is fit some flyback diodes, some R5000Fs. Uh, fast acting diodes to uh, snub any flyback. They'll go short circuit and blow the fuse, but it won't take out your output transformer. Sockets removed, that actually gives us a fighting chance of cleaning all the tobacco residue, whatever it is, off that area as well. There you go, it looks a bit better, doesn't it? That was nothing more than just shellite on a bit of uh, rag. <laughs> now it looks a bit worse for wear. Shellite's known in uh, the US as naphtha just like a light uh, petroleum distillate if you want to get technical they use it for like zippo lighters and whatever uh, as a lighter fuel but it's got lots of applications in guitar and amplifier work i'm glad i took that switch out check it out I wasn't going to there for a bit but i thought i like taking stuff out and just cleaning under it if it's disconnected anyway because i found a friggin random keps nut <laughs> stuck to the shmoo underneath you can see the footprint it left there on the chassis so <laughs> that could have come loose and Done all sorts of damage too. Wonder what that was off. It's not off the inside of this. Uh, oh no, there it is. Look, <laughs> the uh, previous tech lost the lost the caps nut. So instead of digging in and admitting that they've got to find it, as frustrating as that can be, they just grabbed another nut. Not a lock nut. Not a caps nut. Just a standard nut. And that actually had the the main safety earth on it. Fantastic. I'm trying to be positive, but whoever does this should have their soldering iron taken off them. 
this thing some people get on my case for being too thorough like going way too far um, but if I didn't I wouldn't find stuff like this um, my name is on this thing I, not only that but the customer safety and the friggin their house burning down you know like there's a lot of liability here and that's why I go above and beyond um, if you're a backyard tech working on your own amp for fun it's a different ball game so doing all this kind of stuff it, it's kind of necessary at this level so here's your typical connection when we undo these it just falls off in your hand half of that washes uh, that eyelet has been missing for who knows how many years and uh, just fell off in my hand so that a, a reliable ground that is not so while we've got all that fixing hardware off it's easier to just drop the transformer out and uh, clean this area up a bit more easily did i how many times did i use easily in that sentence all these jack uh <laughs> jack nuts are barely finger tight too and that's how they ground to the chassis this thing must have had so many issues oh it makes a liar out of me <laughs> so I hit roll on the camera i'm still not very tight but not quite finger tight so these uh fascias are a bit of a pain uh because they they sort of particularly where it's been dented it's sort of flush with the nut you can't get the um the socket onto there and you can see someone's chewed that up with pliers trying to get it off before as as here you've just got to do it the proper way you've got to take off any of the ones that are over them some are over some are within it uh, so like the jacks there are over it but then the jacks here are within it that kind of thing they got extra washes bit of a weird setup don't know why they did all that but um this one feels like it's held on with double-sided tape as well and this is all just to get the stuff off the front panel to check behind the brass plate and clean all that area up so i'm gonna have to get my little pallet knife behind that and try and get it out without distorting the front panel because we can't get a socket onto this stuff and i don't want to just mangle it up with uh, pliers like the previous guy did champion so all the solders cleaned up off the chassis uh we've cleaned all the wax off it uh it might be easier to re-establish these these gooey wires uh well well the plates like this hanging out the front um we've cleaned up around the sockets it actually wasn't too bad around the back area where there's been no uh spray residue applied and up the front we cleaned it with solvent and uh cleaned up the solder joints there as well so we'll so we'll uh Rough up the chassis where we're going to put some solder with some scotch bright, and we'll uh, then we'll move on to depopulating these boards, cleaning them up, and repopulating them, and getting ready to reassemble the whole shebang. There's all the components removed, including all the lead and the solder and that's a uh, little canister there to be disposed of responsibly. Uh, there's all the bits and pieces off the board, as I said, some of which will be reused. There's the hardware and the output valves and preamp valves buried down there. Uh, I managed to get the front panel off reasonably easily. It's sort of sticky um, across the whole surface, but you can see there's been some spillage of something as well. Uh, so we'll clean that up. Uh, I can apply some double-sided tape to that again just to make sure it doesn't rattle on any positions because that can be an issue, issue, issue. With these ones with the oversized holes, um, if they just had uh, the, the pot nuts tightening all the way across, it wouldn't be a problem. But I don't know why they chose to do that. Maybe uh, ease of manufacture, speeding up the assembly process, not sure. Oh, Trevians, look at those beautiful boards, would you? Now, I get a lot of people asking whenever I do this, oh, it would have been easier to make new ones. Not really. Uh, Transfer in the layout, and but, you know, the, these aren't your standard AB763 boards that you can get uh, from, you know, vendors for clones these days. The layout's a bit different. The screw position's a bit different. So by the time you do all that, uh, you may as well just clean the things. And everything's original too. The customer feels nice and cosy that it's all the same parts, just all the schmoo cleaned off them. And uh, you don't have to go pressing new ones or trying to get an aftermarket option that matches up perfectly because none of them really do. So there you go. Uh, I might leave it here for tonight and uh, on the next episode we'll uh, 
get into the reconstruction and then on the final one we'll test it and i'll see if i can squeeze it into one more you i've cut a lot out of this one in the process because you've seen all of that stuff before it's all a bit boring um so we just want results champion so i'll see you on the next one take it squeezy